Shares of Royal Caribbean are up 85 percent so far this year as people continue to spend on travel and experiences. But there's one segment of the population that has proven to be key to Royal's current strength. Seema Modi spoke to CEO Jason Liberty about that, and she joins me now, Seema. Well, Kelly, as you know, the millennials no doubt led the post-pandemic recovery in travel, but Royal Caribbean says it's the baby boomer customer now that is increasingly booking trips and opting for more expensive cruises as well. well on the luxury side, it's more the baby boomers are coming in. Also, Gen Xers looking to, uh, to build experiences and go on some of more of the expedition uh, type of cruising. And then the millennials um, combined with the Gen Xers are really feeding multi-generational travel. But also that baby boomer is bringing in um, more of that multi-generational travel as the grandparents are looking to travel with their kids and their grandkids. Liberty adds that the older demographic is highly valuable. They pay up for the type of cruise and they tend to bring other family members along with them. He says that's giving Royal Caribbean pricing power in this tough environment. Even with cruise fares rising, Royal says its offerings are still 40% cheaper than hotel vacations. That's up from 2019 levels. And one of the reasons investors continue to bid up cruise stocks and just shows you how investors are also becoming more selective in the travel world. Royal up 26% in the last three months versus Marriott up 2%. Royal also is increasingly opting for biofuels as a way to reduce exposure to the volatility in oil prices. Investors now are going to pivot their focus, Kelly, to Carnival, which is set to report earnings this month. Hmm. I'm surprised the hotels haven't done better. Is it is Marriott indicative of, of kind of all of them being? And then there were some, uh, like an, an underweight for, was it booking and maybe one of the other travel sites this morning? Is there something going on there? I think it really shows you that investors are becoming more discerning when they're looking to invest in the travel space. The airlines have certainly done well, but they always have that oil risk. And now with pricing continuing to rise, you got to wonder, are they pricing out certain customers? With the cruise lines, they were the last ones to really benefit from this post-pandemic surge. So now they're seeing this huge run-up in bookings. The question is, can that last? For the hotels, they're starting to see the average daily rate come down in, in the past couple of months, so a little bit softer pricing could be part of the story. Starting to see it come down. That is interesting and something to watch. And yet, at the same time, we're still hearing about labor shortages uh, across the industry. We are. And, you know, when I think back to the conversation I had with Jason Liberty last night, uh, he really points out that travel agents, which were eliminated during the pandemic, are now coming back. And one of the reasons hmm. is because they're seeing so much demand from that older demographic that prefers to work with a travel agent when they're booking a cruise. Let me tell you, booking a flight, very different from booking a cruise where there are so many different options, Kelly, from the type of cabin, do you get that drink package, do you not? Um, so that's where that customer tends to prefer to work with an experienced travel agent that also tends to be older than uh, millennials. So 70 is a new 60 is what one travel agent Apparently 70 is the new 17, the way people are spending and living it up and all the rest. We've heard it from the restaurants and other groups. Yes. Um, and, uh, fascinating. Seema, thank you very much.